Hello and welcome to yet another episode of True North, where we bring you the lesser known side of an entrepreneur. Today we are joined by the Harvard educated king of chai, Amulik Singh, the CEO of Chai Point. <laughs> So let's get straight into some Chai Pe Charsha with Amulik. Thank you Amulik for joining us on True North today. From being a Harvard grad to building a Chai business in India, how did that happen? Tell us about the genesis of Chai Point. See the genesis has been just the market opportunity and the massive love that the country has for the beverage, right? People love this beverage and it is consumed in robes. So I'm myself a chai lover and for me to connect the dots and realize that the most loved beverage in the country has actually a broken last mile, right? People don't get the right kind of experience for chai. It was a huge opportunity to go after, really. So it's as simple as that, really. I mean, you know, for every cup of coffee that is sold, there are 12 cups of chai that are consumed, but the last mile experience is broken. How do you fix that? And uh, customers love the beverage, so you don't even have to convince customers to have it. Right? That's the genesis, really. And was it a natural progression? Do you come from a family of entrepreneurs? No, I don't come from a family of entrepreneurs. I'm from Jammu and Kashmir, actually. And my father is a retired IPS officer. Uh, most of my family members have been in the government sector, either defense or uh, they're all professionals, essentially, or doctors. Uh, very few of them in business. Um, and I think as a full-time entrepreneur, I'm, I'm amongst the early ones. But thankfully, my family has been very supportive from day one. So, uh, and more importantly, I, you know, started this venture not exactly when I was very young, right? I mean, I, I, I did my graduation, I did my postgrad, then I worked in the corporate sector. So by the time I was venturing into something like this, my family understood that he was getting into it with some sort of a thought process and he was not exactly a kid. So, but was it always at the back of your mind that this is going to be the next step for you? I think what was clear in my mind was that I want to be involved in building a consumer brand. Uh, whether that consumer brand is going to be chai, I had no idea. It was over a period of time and uh, frankly I can't even lay claim to saying that I just woke up and decided it was chai. It was actually a, a group of friends who first thought of chai first and I agreed to be you know, a part of it and execute. It's another thing that I just continued doing it while uh, my friends they sort of decided to pursue other things. But the passion about building a consumer brand, a brand which a day-to-day -day person really loves and enjoys, I think that thought had started coming into my mind way more frequently than I would imagine. Amulik, do you think it's important for a venture or an entrepreneur to have a co-founder? See, I can say it from my context. So my professor from Harvard, Professor Tarun Khanna, is a co-founder. Mm -hmm. And over the course of the last six to seven years, right, I have leaned on him a lot. Right. Typically, these have been aspects relating to uh, expansion, building teams, or uh, investment rounds. And uh, in fact, I must also give him credit that he was the one who gave me the confidence to jump into the venture. And uh, because he essentially, you know, felt that I have the kind of experience where, uh, you know, we would be able to raise some angel money and take this venture forward. That said, right, um, I do feel that every new venture entrepreneur. If we can have a co-founding team, it makes life much simpler, right? In my case, this was guidance at a more strategic level, especially in early initial stages. The journey of an entrepreneur is also a very emotional one, right? The personal dilemma that the founder is going through and, and so on and so forth. So there, if you have a sound board, right, who's equally vested into the business, helps a lot. And that's where Professor Tarun Khanna was of immense help. Over a period of time, I also feel that uh, founders, especially in the early three to four years, need operational load to be shared, mm. right? Because there are just too many things. Right. You know, I mean, you don't have investors backing you very early on. That takes time. And till that happens, um, you know, and a founder is expected to juggle and do a whole lot of things. 
So if the founder has uh, the good fortune to have a, a set of co-founders, or one or individual or, or more, mm -hmm. right, to take on that operational load and take the direction for, forward, it's a great thing. At the same time, what I will also say is that the chemistry between the co-founders has to be very, right, because as things start maturing especially, or whenever crunch time come and challenges come, the chemistry matters a lot. So it is a decision which can be fraught with challenges also. In the early stages, in balance, I would definitely say that if you can have the luxury of having a perfectly aligned person as a co-founder, it's great. Tell us about some of the challenges of scaling up and how do you tackle them? Not just scaling up in terms of the business, how do you internally also, you know, sort of maintain the culture, integrity of the brand? That's why my role as a founder is most important. Mm -hmm. uh, frankly, as I mentioned, I mean, Chai Point has come this far because of its professional team. Mm -hmm. You know, the, uh, the core team, the various leaders who run the businesses, it's their mm -hmm. capability which has brought Chai Point this far. Mm -hmm. And it's their capability to grow further which will decide our trajectory. The role that I have an important one to play, you know, where the important area in which I have a role to play, is to focus on the brand and its purpose, mm. right? And make sure that I am ensuring that we don't lose track around the purpose, right? That's where sometimes I have to be hard and sometimes I have to be diplomatic. Mostly I have to be in a convincing mode because the opportunities that are coming up are so exciting that you know, the discussions with the leaders are all about the purpose. Amulik, what's your true north? My true north would be trying to remain true to myself. You know, it may sound, it should come naturally, but at least in my experience, I've realized that there are so many distractions in your pursuit of things that uh, you have to check and revisit whether are you being true to yourself. And I think that's the most important thing, right? I'm, uh, because all this doesn't happen in a vacuum. You know, the world around you is changing. Opportunities, different approaches, routes. Your personal life is changing. Your personal responsibilities are changing. And so in light of that, you have to be continuously in the discovery path of your true north. For me, it's about being true to myself and I'm myself changing. One business leader you really admire and are inspired by? I think right now Elon Musk, simply because what he's doing is possibly genuinely solving the biggest problems in the world. Favorite outdoor activity? I think trekking, high mountain trekking, cold weather high mountain trekking. And favorite bike? Favorite bike? I still find the thudding noise of a 500cc and feel the best, <laughs> in spite of having driven all the other fancy bikes. One secret desire that you have? Go to Mars. <laughs> With Elon Musk? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but frankly, I would love to do some serious space travel. One favorite drink other than chai? I love my scotch uh, whenever I can have it. And um, uh, scotch on the rocks and uh, Laphroaig is what I'm having right now. I love my scotch whenever I can. Yeah. Like a true blue Punjabi? Well, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Thank you so much, Amulik, for your time and this conversation, very heartfelt conversation, and we wish you luck. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for having me.